What is going on, Locks Mob, and welcome back to the Locks DFS NHL Breakdown. I am your host, Adi Narang, and I'll be breaking down this 12-game main slate um, for Tuesday, February 5th on DraftKings, FanDuel, and Prize Picks. Um, so just a few things to talk about before we uh, get started on breaking out this slate. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so right here at Really Addy. So I'm going to tweet about everything hockey related, sports betting related, basketball related, etc., etc., etc. We're coming off real big days uh, just in locks in general. Hockey did well yesterday. Just barely missed on FanDuel. I actually thought we had cast on FanDuel last night. Uh, because I had won all my head-to-head, so I just assumed we had cast. But then looking at double-ups, we were just on the bubble. So I think some members made it in, some maybe didn't. Um, but DraftKings did really well as well because uh, we had a lot of we had a lot of a lot of points on our cheat sheet. So I think members did fairly well over there. I saw quite a few screenshots, and then basketball was crazy. Obviously, you guys know basketball with Taylor. But we had some massive wins in basketball. Uh, we had one of our one of our longtime NBA members, Sean Carroll. He won forty thousand um, dollars using Taylor's cheat sheet, using the plays in his video. So, if you aren't with us, I mean, locksdfs.com. Get yourself an all access month pass or something because because we're crushing it over here, um, and it's just gonna get bigger. It's just gonna get better as we continue to expand as our new website gets developed. It's a great time to get on board with the team early. So. Look into that, um, and then prize picks as well. As well, I think my prize picks went two and one yesterday. Um, the one that missed was Claude Giroux, but Sean Couturier over hit, um, and then Tyler Sagan over hit. So it was a good overall day. I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys another prize pick at the end of this video, um, or I guess just when I start talking about him. But I'll give you guys a free prize pick. But with that all being said, let's get into it. So since it is a 12 game slate, I'm not gonna talk about every game for sure. I'm not gonna talk too much about. Too many players. I'm going to try and keep it more condensed since it is a bigger slate. Um, so I'll talk about, like as usual, my favorite plays um, at each position, at each price point. And I'll try and give you a couple guys at each at each position. Um, so at the top, we got kind of this three-headed monster, Crosby, McDavid, McKinnon. Uh, for me, it's either McDavid or McKinnon, but for me, it's it's neck and neck. And and the reason why is, uh, is I mean, you got McDavid. Who's skating on a line with Ty Ratty and Milan Lucic? So he is the sole driver of that line. He's going to take majority of the shots for that line. It's one of these situations that we saw with Sidney Crosby a couple years, or not a couple years ago, even as recent as recently as last year, when they skate him with guys like Brian Rust or guys that don't really shoot the puck too much, Dom, uh, Dominic Simon. You'll see you'll see Sidney Crosby take on an increased shot volume role. However, when he's skating with guys like Patrick Hornquist or Jake Gensel or or Phil Kessel maybe or someone like that, you'll see him take more of a a, a distributor role. And that's similar with with McDavid when he's skating with a guy like Drysaddle or something. But when he's on his own, he'll take all that I Corsi four per sixty to himself. He'll be chucking the puck in the net, and he's got the best possible matchup versus the worst team in the league. Expected goals against per sixty wise, and they also have an absolutely dreadful penalty kill. Um, so, so McDavid smash spot for him. Um, I think I, I love starting with him, and then McKinnon. The big news on McKinnon is that Colorado one is back. It lasted one game. That experiment with having um, Colin Wilson on his wing and. Uh, Whoever else was on McKinnon's wing, um, Colin Wilson and Alexander Kerfoot. But now we got regular Colorado one back. McKinnon, Ranton, and Landeskog correlates perfectly on the power play one as well. I think McKinnon is in a smash spot with his line mates back. 7.6K is a, is a perfectly reasonable salary for, I mean, he, he should be the highest priced guy on the slate. So the fact that he's not um, is a reasonable salary. Columbus, a team that a lot of people uh, expect to be a lot better defensively than they are. Um, they're only ranked seventh in the league, if you can see via Corsica right here. I've it pulled up. They're seventh in the league expected goals against per sixty wise. Um, so they're not a not a crazy good defensive team, but now they're on the road in Colorado. So big fan of McKinnon and McDavid, and I think because I'm not too big of a fan of this lower price range of center, I think starting with both of them, even though it'd be really tough to afford, might be the move. Um, if you do want to pay down a little bit, I like the spot for Philip Denault. I always like this Montreal one line of Gallagher, Denault, and uh, and Drouin. I just think it's a super, super talented line. And Corsi 4 per 60 also dictates that this line dominates puck possession. Um, so I think pairing Denault, getting cheap exposure to Gallagher and Drouin is a good play. 
uh, he's not a guy that's going to shoot the puck a lot. So he's definitely someone you want to pair with Gallagher, not play as a one-off. But I definitely think he's in play. And then the last guy, Ryan Johansson, 5.4K. This is a smash spot for uh, all of Nashville. I mean, they opened at 3.8, and now they've risen to 3.9 projected goals. So uh, absolute smash spot for them. Johansson's been shooting the puck a bit more recently. He's got, uh, I, com- I believe, 10 combined shots in the past three games. So he has been he has been uh, more active because uh, typically you wouldn't play Ryan Johansson because he's just such a setup guy. But when you're getting these kind of minutes and exposure to Arvidsson and Johansson and a guy who's shooting the puck, I really like him at 5.4K if I'm coming down here. So moving on to winger. Um, winger for me begins and ends with Alex Ovechkin. 7.7K. He's an absolute smash play. If you're not double stacking center, or even if you are, and you're going to load your team up with value the rest of it, I think Ovechkin is an is in an absolute smash spot. Washington is projected for the highest uh, team total on the slate at four versus a Vancouver team that has been awful defensively this year. Um, why can I not find it? Oh, here we go. Four. They've been awful defensively this year, although I will say they're getting a bit healthier. Alexander Edler did get hurt last game, so... Um, he will not travel to Washington. So that is a massive blow for them defensively. Uh, so that is why you see Washington with the highest projected uh, team total on the slate. I think Ovechkin exposure is a must. Um, if you're running multiple lineups, I would have exposure to him in like a bunch of them. So, uh, and if you're building cash games, I think he's probably the guy you start with. Even if you want to fade one of those two centers, maybe play a Johansson. I think Ovechkin is a guy that you might just have to have in your lineup. Um, a little bit farther down, I love Philip Forsberg, 6.4K, like I talked about. Nashville, big smash spot for them. Arvidsson is a bit cheaper over here on uh, FanDuel, so I think he's a good player over here at 7.6K when it's closer between him and Forsberg. But when there's this big of a gap between Forsberg and Arvidsson, um, obviously Arvidsson shoots the puck quite a bit more, but Forsberg still shoots the puck a ton, so getting him at 6.4 is a steal. And then the last guy I want to talk about, is a bit farther down. Uh, I'm scrolling in the wrong direction. Uh, Oliver Bjorkstrand right here at 3.3K. So Columbus, uh, I think this Columbus and Colorado game could shoot out. I think Colorado scores quite a few goals, and Columbus is a really talented offense in their own right. Um, Neither Colorado line has been that great defensively. Even the McKinnon line hasn't been great defensively. And there's been a little switch up on this Columbus Blue Jackets team. We got Nick Foligno on this first line and Artemi Panarin dropped to the second line. And Oliver Bjorkstrand bumped up to the second line with Alexander Wenberg. Alexander Wenberg, a really good distributor of the puck. So it's a great spot for guys like Panarin and Bjorkstrand. Bjorkstrand is third on the Blue Jackets in iCourse 4 per 60 um, with the iCourse 4 slightly above 15, which is amazing. So I would almost expect him to be the primary shooter on this line. I think Panarin will get his shots, obviously. But for the price, 3.3K for Bjorkstrand, second team power play exposure. Um, to a team that runs their power plays fairly 1A, 1B. Uh, they do lead, obviously, it is a power play 1, power play 2. But you still have Seth Jones and Boone Jenner and Josh Anderson, and really talented players on the second power play. So they do get their fair run. I think Bjorkstrand's a smash play uh, for this price. Moving on to defense, though. The big news on defense, Eric Carlson remains out. Um, that obviously gives a massive bump to Brent Burns at 6.9K. Obviously, I've talked about paying up for OV, paying up for these wingers. So if you can't afford Brent Burns versus Winnipeg, I don't blame you. But if you can, just know that he is the highest floor player on the slate, as always. Uh, his shot on goal plus block shot upside is just unparalleled, especially with Eric Carlson out. So exposure to him um, is... is uh, definitely um a good move and then scrolling down a little bit or a lot a bit farther because of the um eric carlson being out mark edward vlasic uh is he's drawn back into the lineup and now he's been after a month as you can see he was out since the colorado game but with eric carlson out he is uh he's gonna skate consistently like 22 23 minutes which is uh which is great for a 3k player but he's also gonna get second team uh second unit power play run and he's going to correlate really, really well with a lot of these 
uh, SJ forwards. And I think this Winnipeg San Jose game is an, is another game that certainly could shoot out. Both two good offenses. San Jose second in the league and expected goals four per sixty. Winnipeg not as dominant expected goals against per sixty as you would expect. Uh, they're about middle of the pack, so definitely a game that could feature quite a few goals. Um, and then with that all. With that on defense. So the rest of the defense, as you guys know, LoxyFS.com, I will have all the plays broken down in our members-only Slack shout. I'll talk about them. I'll have them on the cheat sheet. Uh, They'll all be there. And then goalie, as always, um, like I say, close your eyes and pray. But if you can, um, just correlate your goalie with whoever you have a bunch of skaters from. I mean, if you got a bunch of Edmonton players, maybe the Edmonton goalie. Although I do think that Edmonton-Chicago game is over. I think both those both those teams score quite a few goals. Um, so maybe no goalie there. But if you think Nashville dominates as they're expected to, I think they might even be the biggest uh, favorites on the entire slate at uh, plus minus 280. Then maybe a Jose Soros or Pekka Rene, whoever's projected to start, could uh, be in play. But as always, just correlate it so that if your players do well, uh, your goalie does well as well. Um, with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. As always, likes are always appreciated, um, more than appreciated. Um, and if you do like, comment, and subscribe, you will be entered into winning our free season pass of your choice, NBA, NHL, um, soccer, sports bets, college basketball, whatever you want uh, of your choice, you get to choose. All you got to do is like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, so thank you guys for watching this video. I uh, hope to see you back here tomorrow, and I hope you win a ton of money tonight. Peace.